we live in an age where we believe evidence-based medicine. That is to say, if we believe that somebody can just eat fewer calories and lose weight, and it doesn't really matter what those calories are, that is, you could have ice cream for dinner, as long as it's the same number of calories, then, and you're cutting them, then you should lose weight. If we believe that, then we should test it in a study. Otherwise, we shouldn't be really saying that it's true. And over the past 50, 60, 70 years, there's been hundreds of weight loss studies. So let's list all of the top randomized control trials that have shown the benefit of weight loss when you simply cut your calories, as all these experts say. There have been exactly zero studies that show that if you simply cut 500 or 600 calories per day, you will lose weight over the long term. Zero. Everybody already knows it doesn't work. Let's look at this, for example, in a classic textbook called Jocelyn's Diabetes Mellitus in 2005. They said that reduction of caloric intake is the cornerstone of any therapy for obesity. Exactly, right? Cut your calories. However, they also go on to me uh, mention that both low-calorie diets and very low-calorie diets, none of these approaches has any proven merit. That is, no study has actually shown that it works. We all say it, but we know it doesn't work. That's what this very authoritative textbook says. Even way back in 1998, the Handbook of Obesity, which was a classic textbook, says dietary therapy remains the cornerstone of treatment and reduction of energy intake continues to be the basis of successful weight reduction programs. That is, again, cut your calories. It's not about the types of food you're eating. It's not about ultra-processed foods or, or uh, carbs or fat. It's not the types of foods, just calories. Ice cream is the same as broccoli, if it's the same number of calories, right? They go on to say that the results of such diets are known to be poor and not long-lasting. In other words, everybody knows that cutting calories just don't work. In the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the top medical journals in 2012, there was this Today study. And it was a, a, a study done in type 2 diabetics. Nevertheless, they compared metformin, which is uh, one of the classic drugs for type 2 diabetes, compared to ro the addition of rosiglitazone or lifestyle, which focused on calorie deficit approach. Cut your calories. Remember, nothing about carbs, sugar, processed foods, nothing like that. It's all about calories. Calorie deficit approach to decreasing energy intake by limiting the intake of high fat and high sugar foods. Well, you can see when you compare metformin to metformin plus lifestyle, that is the addition of this calorie deficit lifestyle, at the end of five years, there's actually zero difference in the body mass index of the two groups. In other words, adding the calorie restriction didn't do anything in terms of body weight. Neither did it do anything in terms of type 2 diabetes either. In 2012, also, we had the Diabetes Prevention Program, which looked once again at metformin versus a lifestyle versus placebo, which is just doing nothing at all. And at first, the lifestyle, the calorie deficit approach, in fact, does seem to have a benefit, about 6 kilos of weight, which is like 12, 13 pounds. However, by six months to a year, those benefits are already wearing off. And by the end of uh, four years, there's really no difference with metformin and lifestyle and even with placebo. That is eating your own regular diet and doing a calorie deficit just didn't make any difference. And perhaps the most famous of these studies is the Women's Health Initiative from 2006 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. They took almost 50,000 women 
and they compared them to a calorie restricted group and you can see that at baseline they're eating 1788 calories and they dropped it to 1443 a daily deficit of 361 calories if that translated into fat loss and weight loss they should be losing 20 to 30 pounds per year from their frames however when they compared this calorie restrictive effect and along with some increased exercise to people who just followed their natural diet normal diet didn't do anything you see at one year there is a nice difference but only two kilograms or about five pounds those differences largely wane by about three to four years and by five years there's no difference between eating and uh, a calorie deficit and not eating. So again, all of our available evidence says that cutting calories doesn't help you lose weight over the long term, which is really what we're interested in. And we're pretty sure why that happens. So we've done so many studies over the years. This is a meta-analysis, which is a compilation of 29 published studies, which shows the relationship between how, much, how many calories you take and how many calories you're burning. So it's looking at RMR, which is resting metabolic rate. So what they did was they took studies where they people had cut their calories by about 10 to 15%, for example, and then measured how many calories they were burning. And what they found was that they're burning about 10 or 15% less. So therefore, if you're eating 10% fewer calories, but burning 10% fewer calories, your overall weight is not going to increase. Because remember, in most of these studies, they're not paying attention to what they're eating, simply the total number of calories. In fact, their conclusion is that they can state with some certainty that a decrease in energy expenditure is a universal response to energy restriction, which translates into if you eat fewer calories, your body will burn fewer calories. And that's a universal response. So if that happens, then of course, the body fat is minimally changed. So the question is, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't ca cutting calories work? And it's really because it's a very simplistic way of thinking of things. When you're looking at calories, it's really just the sort of proximate cause. That is, if you think about an analogy, for example, suppose you suffer from alcoholism, you might say, for example, that, hey, it's simply a problem of too much alcohol in versus too little alcohol out, right? So the solution is to just drink less alcohol. Well, that's wrong. That, in fact, never works. Telling somebody who has alcoholism to just drink less alcohol, is guaranteed to not work. Why? Because you haven't got into the deeper reason why they are drinking the alcohol. Perhaps they're addicted. Perhaps they're depressed. Perhaps they had some post-traumatic stress disorder, in which case they need counseling or Alcoholics Anonymous. So you see that you have to get into the deeper reason, not simply say it's alcohol in and alcohol out. And the same situation exists with calories. If you simply, if you have a problem of weight gain, and you say it's too many calories in versus too few calories out, the solution is not just to say, eat fewer calories, because your body will just burn fewer calories. Telling somebody who has alcoholism to just drink less alcohol is guaranteed to not work. Why? Because you haven't got into the deeper reason why they are drinking the alcohol. Perhaps they're addicted, perhaps they're depressed, perhaps they had some post-traumatic stress disorder, in which case they need counseling or Alcoholics Anonymous. So you see that you have to get into the deeper reason, not simply say it's alcohol in and alcohol out. And the same situation exists with calories. If you simply, if you have a problem of weight gain, and you say it's too many calories in versus too few calories out, the solution is not just to say, eat fewer calories because your body will just burn fewer calories. That's the wrong solution. What you have to do is get into the deeper level of understanding of why the calories are unbalanced like that. For example, if the ultimate cause or the real problem is you're eating too frequently, that's causing you to eat more calories, which is causing you to eat weight, the weight gain. 
The solution is not to say just eat fewer calories. The solution is to eat less frequently. Maybe do more fasting. If you're eating too many processed foods, which are not satiating, it's not making you full, therefore you're eating a lot more, the answer is to eat less processed foods. If you have too easy access to food, food is everywhere, it's always around you. Well, you need to make it limited. If you're eating for emotional reasons, you're depressed or uh, you're having you know, a bad day, well, then you need to fix that. Maybe it needs counseling, maybe you need to talk to somebody. If you have bad habits, snacking, for example, uh, while, you're, while you're in the car, or snacking while you're watching a movie, well, then you need to fix that. If you have too much sugar, well, that could be a cause that you're eating too many calories, then you need to fix that. If you're eating out too much, well, that often has more calories than if you eat in. All of those problems are going to what leads you to the calorie uh, part of the equation, which leads to weight gain, but it's really trying to understand that deeper cause of excess, excessive calories that is leading to weight gain. And that's why I say focusing on calories is such an ineffective way of treating the weight gain. Just like saying, just drink fewer alcohol drinks. It doesn't work that way. And let's, let's try to think a little bit deeper, try and get down to the ultimate cause so that we can fix it.